Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Music Den. I'm your host, Armando Venditti, hoping you guys are having a good day and that you're looking after yourselves and one another. I want to welcome you all back to part three of my live album spotlight series on Led Zeppelin. Now, in part one, I took a look at The Song Remains the Same, specifically the 2007 remastered and reissued version of the show containing all 15 tracks from the concert. In part two, I took a look at How the West Was One. Now, as I said in part two, How the West Was One was an album that came out in May of 2003. It was a concert that people really didn't know existed, apart from Jimmy Page. It was a triple disc set containing 18 tracks, so a, an expansive set, a massive set, clocking in at 155 minutes in terms of playing time. So it was a big deal at the time. So in part three, we are basically going to go album versus album. I'm going to go through each album with you, and I'm going to let you know my honest opinion as to which release that I believe is the better release. Not that it's the definitive release, but in my opinion, as to which concert is the better bang for your buck. Okay, so first we're going to take a look at uh, The Song Remains the Same. All right. Now, again, <clears throat> the original 1976 release that was released in October of 1976 consisted of nine tracks. Now, as I said before, even when I purchased the album, on vinyl in 1987 and i looked at you know the track listing and i saw that there was only nine tracks on the album i thought this couldn't be like it, this cannot be the entire show right and in 2007 when this version of the album came out of uh, the song remains the same i was surprised to find out that the band reinstated six tracks into the set list there were seven tracks as i said that were uh that were recorded the one track that was not included on the reissued and remastered version is thank you so when this came out in 2007 everybody ran for the record stores to get the complete version of the song remains the same so again i'm going to go through the track listing with you okay and it is, you know, chock full of hits and concert staples, okay? You've got Rock and Roll, Celebration Day, Black Dog, Over the Hills and Far Away, okay? Amazing. And uh, Black Dog and Over the Hills and Far Away were two of the tracks were reinstated into the set list. You also have a Misty Mountain Hop, you know, uh, Since I've Been Loving You. A mammoth 18, 18, mammoth eight minute and 23 minute version of the track. You also have No Quarter, right? 10 minutes and 38 seconds. Again, very atmospheric track, <clears throat> kind of um, almost very eerie, you know, with the use of Mellotron by John Paul Jones. Just amazing. Very emotional, very atmospheric, and very haunting in some spots. Okay. You also have, again, after that, the song remains the same. The rain song, the ocean, okay? Funky and powerful as all hell. When you hear John Bonham again counting in one, two, you know, and just going for it on the drums, just amazing. That is disc one of the 2007 reissue version. And again, track three on disc one has the intro to uh, Bring It On Home from Zeppelin Two. I must, you know, mention that. Disc two, you have five tracks. Starts off with Days and Confused. Concert staple from day one till around 77. Just an amazing version of this track. My opinion, the definitive version of Days and Confused. The original version clocked in at 26 minutes and 52 seconds. This version is a mammoth, epic, 29 minute, 18 second version of the track beautiful okay again my very humble opinion the definitive version of this track coming up here you have after days to confused is stay away to heaven okay 10 minutes 53 seconds slightly edited down by a few seconds you also have moby dick <laughs> excuse me 
And uh, again, that is also edited down from like 12 minutes to 11 minutes and two seconds. Track four is Heartbreaker, which was one of the tracks that was reinstated into the set list, clocking in at six minutes and 19 seconds. Okay. And this, this two finishes out with a 13 minute, 51 second version of Hola Love. Now, as I said before, Zeppelin were well known to go, for doing medleys with these songs like Hola Love would we'll go off into, you know, um, other tracks like, you know, Blue Switch Shoes, etc. cetera. Um, and it clocks in at, again, a mammoth uh, 13 minutes and 51 seconds. Okay. That is the song remains the same. Okay. Packed full of hits, you know, concert tables, songs that get you by the throat, that are unrelenting, powerful, heavy, and also emotional, and don't let go until the very end of the show. And you are basically left deaf, dumb, and blind by the end of the show. And if you were lucky to be there, you know, God love you, right? Now, let's take a look at <clears throat> how the West was won, okay? Um, again, this track listing is sublime, okay? 18 tracks in all across three CDs. There are other songs here that were not on, that when they were released, I've never heard them live. Songs like Immigrant Song. Um, let's see here. Immigrant Song starts off the show. Again, you have songs like uh, Heartbreaker, <clears throat> Black Dog, Over the Hills and Far Away, which at that point was a con was a firm, you know, new to the set list. Um, Since I've Been Loving You, another eight minute and two second version of that, you know, blues number, just beautiful, just amazing. Okay, and after that, you have uh, Stairway to Heaven, which a uh, bit of a shorter version. It's only like nine minutes, only nine minutes, but still powerful. Then uh, after that, you have a mini acoustic set with Going to California, and that's the way. Going to California, I've never heard live until I heard it on this album. That's the way. The only time I heard That's the Way was um, on the uh, No Quarter Page and Plan album that came out in 1994. Yes, I have that as well when it first came out. Amazing. Amazing. This is a beautiful version of it too. Very emotional. And uh, CD1 ends off with, uh, and I've say, I hope I say this right, Brownie or Stomp. Okay. Uh, with uh, John Bonham on backup vocals with Robert Plant. That's disc one, okay? <clears throat> disc two starts off with uh, Dazed and Confused, clocking in at, again, a mammoth 25, minute, 25 minutes and 25 seconds, okay? Now, with this version of Dazed and Confused, they go off into a bit of a medley. They go off into different other different tracks. They go into a version of Walter's Walk, uh, The Crunch, uh, which is really funky, and I don't think people expected them to go into that. Uh, the Crunch at this point uh, was on uh, the uh, Houses of the Holy, and I'm not sure if it was released as of yet. I don't believe it was released as of yet. Uh, and again, I don't think people knew what to make of it, but it's still a fantastic version of it. And then it goes back into um, Days and Confused. After that, you have um, track two, What Is and What Should Never Be from Zeppelin 2. I've never heard that live. This version, beautiful, beautiful, very powerful. Um, Dancing Days um, comes next. Great version of this. Very summer-like type of a track. You know, like you're out, you're enjoying the weather, you're, you know, washing your car or listening to this on the radio or you're out in the, out in the patio with a drink with your friends, having a barbecue. You know, very, it's a very emotive track, very atmospheric, right? Puts you in the right frame of mind. Okay, Moby Dick comes next. That clocks in at, uh, let's see here, 19 minutes. 
and change, a 19-minute version of Moby Dick, okay? Uh, and that's disc two. Disc three starts off with Whole Lot of Love, goes off into a, a medley with other uh, songs, one called Boogie, Boogie Chillin', uh, Let's Have a Party, Hello Mary Lou, which is included on the original 2003 Release. It was omitted from the 2018 reissue of the of the album. I don't. I do not know why. And it also has a song, um, "Going Down Slow." Now that version of the track of "Whole Lot of Love" clocks in at a monster 23 minutes and seven seconds. Okay, so just huge, right? Very expansive. Next up is "Rock and Roll," right? A staple track for the band to be done live. Very energetic, very bombastic, very in your face, going for the throat, right? Up next is The Ocean. Very heavy track, funky in spots. <clears throat> John Bonham is in control on the drums and he's basically leading the band right through it, just powering right through it. And the uh, third disc, the final disc, ends off with Bring It On Home from Zeppelin II, um, mixed with a, another song called Bring It On Back, okay? Clocking in at 9 minutes and 30 seconds, okay? That's that's the album. That's the complete set. Playing time of 155 minutes and change, okay? Now, when I look at both albums, at the remastered version of The Song Remains the Same and of uh, How the West Was Won, and in terms of which album do I like better, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm inclined to go with How the West Was Won. Okay? I know that's going to piss off some people. That might shock some people. But you know what? To me, if this album was released instead of um, The Song Remains the Same, this would have been a better release because you have a you have a well-rounded full experience of Zeppelin live. You have the immigrant song, you have Heartbreaker, Black Dog, you know, all the staples of their set at the time. You know, over the hills on far away again. But you also have the, you know. Uh, as I go through my notes here, you also have the three tracks that end of disc one, going to California, that's the way, Bronny or Stomp, and again, I hope I say that right, you have that three track acoustic set where you can just, or when I hear it, I can just imagine all three or all four members, sorry, of the band sitting at the front of the stage with their guitars and just going for it, you know, they're feeding off the energy given to them by the audience. The, audi the audience is taking that energy that the band is giving them and giving it back to the band. So it's a it's a mutual ex mutual exchange of energy, of positivity, of love, and acceptance of one another. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, and um, you know you also get uh, again you get the concert staples like Dazed and Confused, which they performed, I believe, on the steady basis up until around 77, where I do believe that Dazed and Confused was dropped from the set list. Um, but you also get them going off into other, um, like doing medleys, going off to other songs, into other tracks like Walter's Walk, The Crunge, you know, um, also other songs like What Is and What Should Never Be, you know, which is a perfect track live. Dancing Days, beautiful, beautiful. Moby Dick, right? Um, you know, John Bonham's opus, right? Magnum opus in terms of a drum solo. So, you know, it's just amazing. You also have Whole Lot of Love that goes off into other songs like Let's Have a Party, Hello Mary Lou, you know, where you get, you get these songs that they play that go off into different medleys and stuff. So for me... As a concert goer and as a live album listener, 
I'm pulled into the show more on How the West Was Won than I was on uh, The Song Remains the Same. I'm not knocking The Song Remains the Same as an album. I think that the reissued and remastered version is better than the original 76 release. But in terms of comparison between The Song Remains the Same and Holly West was one, I do fully believe that Holly West was one is indeed the better show. Again, it's just my opinion. It's not written, you know, it's not the gospel. It is just an opinion. So please, guys out there, let me know what you think of of my uh, picks here. You know, do you like the song remains the same overall? Do you like the remastered version with the full set of tracks? Or do you like the original 1976 version? Do you like, you know, how the West was won? Do you think that that was the better version, you know, that that was the better live album? Or do you still prefer uh, the song remains the same? Again, there are no right or wrong answers, just opinion. So again, please put down there in the comments below what you think. And uh, yeah, let me know again what is your opinion on, on all this. So that's it for now. Um, I do have other shows again coming up with Bill Schuster. We are going to be continuing our uh, top five albums of the 1990s. We've done years 1990 to 1992. We're going to be continuing with years 1993 to 1999. We are also going to be working on a show of our top 30 prog tracks. And uh, given the fact that we've each picked 30 artists, and uh, the criteria is this, 30 artists, one track per artist, and at least one, um, let's put this, in each list of the 30 tracks, we're going to split them up into 10 uh, artists per list. We're going to be picking at least one epic track 10 minutes or more in terms of a prog track. So please stay tuned for that. Again, we're going to split that up into three segments because if we did if we did all 30 prog artists in one go, we drive each other crazy. And I'm not about to do that. So that's coming up. And uh, please stay tuned for more episodes coming up. Please click like and subscribe and hit the notification bell again to keep yourselves on top of any new content that I've got coming up. Um April 1st is coming up. April 1st is the, I guess you call it the anniversary of when I started uh, the, the music then. And I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone that's been watching and everybody for your comments um, and for your support. It's been a scary proposition for me to do this on my own. I really want to thank Bill Schuster and Ryan Gavalier and uh, Peter Kent and Andrew Cox, um, and everyone else that has helped me do these episodes. It isn't easy, but you know what? It is fun for me to do this, and I do enjoy doing it. So please, again, um, thank. I want to thank everyone for watching and for all of your support. So, uh, But for right now, I will say goodbye. Please, again, look after yourselves and one another, and I will see you soon with another episode. Bye for now.